I wanted to call this video top three Ravager build mistakes you're going to make or something like that, but it felt a little bit clickbaity. This is my initial impressions of the Ravager, some explanation of the stats, and some really, really important mistakes that I think most people are going to make with these builds. Generally speaking, most build videos I put out there is pretty standard, and people who've been playing the game a while can come up with something very similar. This is a very different one, and is a very dangerous build for players who are not paying attention. It's also the first time I'm going to recommend completely different build paths for people who want to auto versus people who want to drive. Like, completely different, no changes, like, nothing similar whatsoever. The first thing that you really need to consider is how the damage over time works on the weapons that we got for the Ravager. Damage over time is a really, really complicated stat. Now, the Blood Letter Scatter Gun that I've shown here is the Tier 10 Limited one and the Unlimited one that you can have infinite number of weapons, uh, you don't have to get all the blueprints, is the Spleen Blaster Scatter Gun. Now, damage over time works in that you apply a stack to the target. This stack will do some amount of damage, in this case it's 1200 over 8 seconds, ticking every 0.6 seconds. Now the damage done is 1200 per stack, period. This damage cannot be buffed with building damage and it cannot be buffed with corrosive damage. So if you're just trying to max out corrosive damage on your build, you know, uh, corrosive battery 2, high volatility cartridges, some other specials, those are going to do very, very poorly because it will only buff the 96 base damage and not the 1200 damage you're actually getting every time you hit with this thing. The most important thing, if you take nothing else away from this video, corrosive damage boosts do not boost damage over time. Period. That's a very, very, very important to realize. Which means that when we put this uh, weapon across all the slots here on the ship, that it it's doing a very small amount of damage base here, 3,840, but the damage over time, which is not displayed, is much, much higher. So damage over time is going to work like a hit and run. So you attack the thing, and you're going to do damage over to it for the next 8 seconds, hit it once, twice, whatever many times, and then run away. You also have to consider that there's a max number of stacks, which is 14,400, which you can actually max out in a few volleys if you do things a little bit dangerously. For that reason, you may want to consider splitting your weapons and having unlimited ones and limited ones, which stack separately. So really consider what you're doing here, because things are going to get complicated real quick. Armors are quite easy, and I'm just going to say use the limited ones, two of each. Maybe it ends up being that we take more missile damage or more corrosive damage. I have zero way of knowing that at this point, other than maybe looking at the Zealot and the Photon ECM for past behavior. All of this stuff is purely 100% math. I haven't coined the fleet. I've watched a video of someone else who coined the fleet and used it in the Zealot targets, but things will change when we see the VXP targets and can analyze what damage type things are doing. A few specials here are really quite easy. Most people can agree on them and find them themselves. The first is Nuclear or Reforged Power Core. It's the Tier 10 Limited Assault Engine. If you don't have it, use the Tier 9.5 one, the FTL. Just make sure that you're only using ones that have the same combat speed total, so five of the same thing. This thing was available in Pillage. You probably already have five. It's also available in the Raid. You don't need to get ten if you already have five. The next special is another one of, the limit, of these limited ones, Chaff Splitter System. It gives you one free multi-shot and is a very good, extremely good anti-missile system. The best one we've seen in the game whatsoever in terms of anti-missile accuracy. This leads me to think that the enemy projectiles will have extremely high anti-missile evade, sort of how we, what happened with the Photon ECMs. This is going to be the best anti-missile special in the game for a long time, if nothing else gets added. So it's an easy one to use here. And I will talk about Missile Defense System 3 after I talk about these weapons and go over some other things. Suffice to say, use this thing. One free multi-shot stacked with other multi-shot. Very beneficial. Next up is another limited thing. This is in the coming in the Forsaken mission. We don't have access to it yet, but the stats are already in game, which is great. It's just showing us what it is. Acid Diffusion Shells give you six times supercharge, which that's fantastic. It means your weapons now are twice as good. You already have a base 6 on the whole. Now you're going up to 12 total. It's fantastic. Also give you some reload and some combat speed, both of which are stats that will definitely do quite well. 
The next special that came with the hole is going to be the, uh, the one that's unlimited here, Zinth, whatever this is called, Zinth Bolster Bow. Gives you a ton of survival and a decent amount of evade here, both of which are fantastic stats. I think this is the first time we've seen a special that gives you a high amount of evade and a decent amount of survival. This is really important to use. If you are already going to be at X1 by Raid 1, it may actually be better for you to run something like Guidance Scrambler 3, Agility System 4. But for most people, and until we actually see the stats of those X1, which won't come out for a month, this is a really key special. You're going to want to use this. At this point, most of you are saying, yeah, great, that looks exactly similar to what I did. Maybe I have a few Missile Defense System 3s on there or something else. These last two specials are going to be where the problem arises. Most folks are just going to say, okay, Corrosive Ship, it does Corrosive Damage. Let's go ahead and stick on Corrosive Battery 2 here. Right? Wrong. You, you can see that this, corro this Corrosive Battery 2 gives you a very, very, very tiny amount of turret defense because that stacks onto survival, and it gives you Corrosive Damage and Building Damage. This does not help, and you should not use this special for the damage over time weapons, because Corrosive Damage and Building Damage do not affect damage over time. Do not use Corrosive Battery 2. I can't say it enough times. Now, the exception to this is if you are going with the second option or build I'm going to talk about, you may want to use this one, or you definitely want to use it in that case. But for the base build right here that I'm showing you with the actual weapons that we that are coming with the ship, you this Corrosive Battery 2 only helps the 7,000 base damage. It does not help the damage you're doing from damage over time. Do not use this special. All right. And of course, the exception for that is if somehow the damage over time ends up being completely useless, the targets have some weird hidden modifier on them, and some weird multiplier to the actual base corrosive damage, or Kixai completely changes things around and has the base initial damage, the regular damage, doing more, it may make sense to do this if there's some massive, un massive unprecedented change. But the numbers are not even close, the damage over time is way higher. Instead, I'm going to say you're going to want to use something that will give you splash, projectile speed, or spread of some sort and modify it based on that. The few, few options that come to mind here include high velocity rounds with 110% projectile speed and a tiny amount of building damage buffs, which will help the normal damage against the buildings if there are those in the target, which we assume there are with assault. High volatility cartridges is also a potential, almost the same projectile speed, and does give you a tiny modifier on corrosive damage, which will help out a slight amount. You can also consider something such as, say, Combustion System 2, because this will give you a small amount of projectile speed, but will give you a whole ton of splash. I'm almost leaning towards this one, because splash tends Splash will mean that your damage will apply to a wider number of targets. It doesn't matter how far away they are as long as they're in that splash range for the damage over time shots here. Every time one of these projectiles hits and it splashes something, if it's at the edge of the splash radius versus the close one, it's going to do some amount of damage. And that amount of damage from the base stats is going to be very, very small, but it applies the damage over time stack regardless of how far away it is as long as it's in that splash radius. But increasing that splash radius will mean you'll be able to hit more targets at once. This special somewhat depends on what the actual targets look like, and I really don't even think we'll know past VXP weekend. I'm just going to stay, stick high volatility cartridges on here, but this will be the last slot to actually be filled. Now, what should you put on instead of a Corrosive Battery 2? Well, you need to do something that increases Multi-Shot. This is a really important special. I haven't talked about Multi-Shot yet, and you're going to want to use something. Options here, and the best one in my opinion, is Roaring Barrel System. Plus 3 Multi-Shot, and gives you a lot of Scattergun Reload, and a very small amount of Corrosive Damage. It also has plus 10 to Combat Speed, so you need to use something with plus 10 Combat Speed on all your ships. You could look at the limited Scatter System 2, which was the first one I was using until someone pointed out to me that, hey, uh, is the reload going to be more important than the damage? And the answer was yes. This one is limited, tier 8. The other one was unlimited, tier 7. It was actually better. And this has less reload, more damage. But again, corrosive damage does not help your main source of damage here, which is really counterintuitive, but it is definitely an option. 
if you want to try and build up that that initial damage as high as possible. I'm leaning towards the first one I showed you, the Roaring Barrel system. You could also go for something such as Twin Fang Fear, which only has a plus two multi-shot, but does give you projectile speed, which neither of the other two do. So if that last special ends up being Combustion System 2 rather than High Velocity Rounds, this one may be an option for that projectile speed, and you know it has a decent amount of reload and a lot of corrosive damage, but again, corrosive damage is not very helpful whatsoever, period. I'm going to show you that I'm just going to stick on Roaring Barrel System, and that's going to be the option I'm going to use here as what I'm leaning to towards right now. Now, this build is pretty much at max weight, which is great, but there's a few other changes that we do need to consider and do need to make. One of those is a countermeasure. Now, Kicksaw likes to break their own rules, and if there's UAVs in the target, like for the Reclaimers, a lot of things should shoot them down. You know, Sprint should shoot at them, Missile Defense System 3 should shoot at them, and Gale should shoot at them. Well, it doesn't happen, and only one of those countermeasures actually really works. We don't know which one that's going to be for the Ravagers, but based on this fact that the special they gave us right here has anti-missile modifiers, I'm going to say anti-missiles are going to be what we're going to want to use, which is the get, which is Missile Defense System 3 anti-missiles. This is really just a projection based on their stat block. I wish they would tell us what rules they're going to break, because if we see missiles in here and only the Sprint shoot at them or only the MDS-3 shoot at them, the people put on the other thing are really going to get screwed. So that's something that you sort of need to consider. Also, look at the Salvo from Missile Defense System 3. One of these can shoot at 10 incoming projectiles, which means if you have 10 of those on the fleet, you can shoot at 100 incoming projectiles every one second or so. There is no situation in the game whatsoever where we need to deal with 100 incoming missiles at the same time. The maximum is 20 or 30. For that reason, I'm going to say you might be okay with one MDS-3 per ship. Period. Not two, even though you could put on there, you really won't need that much. Another potential is what happens with the current fleet, the Reclaimers, and it ends up being that the flagship has some anti-missile bonuses. I obviously don't know that, have not seen the flagship, I don't even think it exists yet for the Ravagers, but if that has some base anti-missile accuracy, it may be a great option to only put two of these on the flagship and nothing else on any of the ships. It may also be that the flagship ends up having negative modifiers or none, and you just want to put two of these on ship number two and call that a day and be done with that one. I'm going to say for simplicity's sake, uh, leave this slot blank for now, and at the very end, put on MDS-3 on whatever ship ends up being best for it, if it's ship number two, if it's one on each, if it's two on the flagship. Do not just stick ten of those on the entire fleet for no reason. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm going to switch in a second to talking about a to showing you a spreadsheet with a whole lot of math. It might be a little bit complicated, don't worry about that. I'm going to explain things and it's really not supposed to be something that you're supposed to understand or click through or worry about a whole lot. Now this spreadsheet here, like I told you, is a bit complicated. It has several different tabs at the bottom where I've gone through and done the math, or I've had Google Sheets, Excel do the math for a few different builds here and a few different things with some other things I did not talk about, including the build you're going to want to use if you want to auto these targets. Now my first approach to this build was trying to maximize supercharge. I did that through adding in the launcher system here, whatever this is actually called, interception system, which has a plus three uh, supercharge, bringing you from 12x to 15x. It turns out that it wasn't really helpful and it did not increase the damage per second a whole lot here. If you want to look through the sheet I'm going to show you, I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description, probably the comments section, a few other places as well. I just took in the base factors here, the damage, the damage over time, the base multi-shot, the reload of this weapon that's going to be at legendary, which is dividing by four, which actually might be an error. I'll go ahead and fix that before I make this thing live, as well as the total stacks allowed. This thing is really important. You can only have 14,400 stacks on the ship before it doesn't apply anymore. And based off this build right here, you get 6,000 stacks per volley, which means you maximize these stacks in 2.4 shots. So by three shots, you maximize these and aren't doing any more damage. Looking at another build here, which is something I pulled up and is more similar to the final one I showed you, 
you end up maxing stacks in exactly three volleys, which means that after you've shot at it three times, your damage over time really is not helping out a whole lot, and you're better off just running away and coming back eight seconds later. And for that reason, it may be best for you to actually just split your weapons and don't use all of the new current one. Don't use all the limited, use 50-50, unlimited, and limited. This will mean your total damage you're doing from DOT is decreasing by a decent amount here, but you're now taking six stacks to max, six shots, six volleys to max out your stacks here, which could be important if the targets are surviving longer than three shots. I have no way of knowing this, but it seems like that's a potential based on the video I saw of Apex Hunter hitting the uh, Zealot style targets with the Ravagers. It's a potential that it takes more than more than three shots to, to, to kill things. And they have more than say, um, they have more than say 5 million health, they have 15 million, then you need to shoot at it six, you need to shoot at it more than more than some number of times here. If the things have a whole ton of health, you're going to need to switch weapons here. I've pointed this out to Kickstai and said, hey, it doesn't really make sense that the limited special or limited weapon may not be the best one and you want to go 50-50. If they do change something, I'd like to have them do that extremely early rather than holding on till I've built 50-50 on my weapons and it doesn't really end up working out. But this is something to consider, especially for more advanced players. Other things I've considered and done the math for here include having Twin Fang Feeder instead of the Roaring Barrel System or Scatter System 2. This will increase your normal damage per volley from uh, looks like 300,000 to 350,000, which is maybe significant, maybe not. You do have to drop an armor or change one to MDS-3 to have this happen. Uh, so that's a potential to use here, but, but projectile speed is even higher. And then I just ran the math with the unlimited weapons. You certainly do less damage to things, but you know it's a potential things to consider here. And it looks like I may not have updated the build picture here. I'll do that before I release this and make this live. And again, here is the split weapons that I've shown you. And I've also looked at Roaring Barrel System with split weapons over just the split weapons. Notice damage per second, 8.5 million with no Roaring Barrel System. And switching from Scatter System 2 to a Roaring Barrel System, you go up by about 3,000 3, damage per second. Also, I'm going to pull up the build for the Absolver build. This is using the Tier 9 Zealot Scatter Guns, which was something that was a bit of a twist. These things just straight up do regular damage, and that's all, that's all you need to worry about. You do regular damage, don't worry about supercharge, don't worry about damage over time. Yeah, multi-shot is still helpful, but slightly less so. And this is a much simpler build for people who just something way easier. Notice there's way less math going on over in this corner. It's quite a whole lot easier. Now, in this case, you do want to max out the corrosive damage. You can see I have that number up on a UZ or ship here to 3,565 as a plus, which is fantastic. That works like straight up how you'd expect. Corrosive damage helps. If you're going to go with the Absolvers, use Corrosive Damage 2. If you're not and you're going with, say, the uh, Split Weapons or something else like that, or the weapons that came out with the hole, you're going to want to use not Corrosive Battery and something else. Back to the game here and what I was showing you is that, you know, things are kind of complicated. Things will depend on a whole lot. Just be, I'm making this video because I want to tell you the math says you need to be very careful about using Corrosive Battery 2. Now, obviously, I haven't coined an entire fleet of these. I haven't tested these in any sort of scenario. I haven't used these specials on any build whatsoever, and this is all purely theoretical. It may end up that I'm completely wrong on how everything works here or Kixi changes everything overnight. I don't expect that to happen. I really have not been wrong on a build in quite a long time here. A few minor things. I also did not factor in any of the upgrades, including the projectile speed, evade bonus, corrosive survival, penetrative survival, or multi-shot, or whatever comes out with the X1. Maybe we get drones again like with the Zealots. I've got no idea. Uh, that all could change. It will make a, some, a small amount of difference, but nothing major in terms of the build. There's no heavy weapon like we have with Siege stuff. Okay, this was a very long video, 20 minutes so far, quite complicated. If you have watched the end, thank you. You are fantastic. And if you have any questions, go ahead and let me know. I'll do my best to respond to these. I will also make a follow-up video coming out 
Um, after we see the VXP targets and I see some other people coin their entire fleet and rush into those and see what happens there. There are still quite a few unknowns. I needed to make this video quite a complicated one, telling you that Corrosive Battery 2, Corrosive Damage in general, is not one that's going to be used. If the raid happened tomorrow, I would probably go with a build right here, um, just with some actually unlimited weapons to make sure I don't actually max those stacks too quickly because things could be quite an issue here. I actually haven't redeemed this last blueprint, but if the raid is tomorrow, I would build five of these things. Uh, although I'm going to be doing something slightly different with my builds and only going for four ships total for the first raid, at least that's my plan right now. Like I said, if you've got questions on this thing, let me know. And thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, supporting the channel. Thank you to all the channel members whose names appear on screen. And as always, this is Derpy, signing out, helping you be a better pirate.